David Foster keeps calling. He he's gonna dress yeah. up as McGann yeah, for Halloween yeah. for Halloween. Okay. I'm busy. I'm busy. So, stop talking about that fucking David Foster. I don't understand why you keep bringing him up. Do I look like I have time for that? I'm a married woman. I don't do interspecies. <laughs> Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are on the globe, I'm Megan Epelon. Bringing to you fur by the minute, the fluff, the raw, and sometimes the wrath. In this week's fur, the power of pets bring people together, dressed up dogs in distress, pause for the cause, wild funny photos, and our producer's pick of the week. First off, many parents fear their pets being lost or kidnapped. For one father, that tragedy in 2019 turned into a positive life-changing experience that impacted thousands of humans. Now, Stephen and his son, Oliver, join us from Bedford, New York, to discuss Oliver's kidnapping. Stephen is the co-author of Oliver, the true story of a stolen dog and the humans he brought together. He wants to share what the stealing and return of Oliver meant to him. Stephen? It taught me uh, a lot about the power of, of community and how people can come to the aid of, of other people when they're in distress. Since we went back into my childhood a little bit, which was kind of an unexpected surprise, but we did that to just show the reader my love of dogs my whole life. My life that was mostly difficult and challenging in its most difficult moment, how uh, my faith in, in God and my parents who are, are not alive, but I've always talked to them and believed in them. Uh, and I dedicated the book to them and my brother, how it all seemed to make my life make sense to me. All the, the suffering and the loneliness that I had been through all seemed to be worth every second of the way the moment that Oliver jumped in my arms again. It's dogs, cats, whatever, they, they have a special meaning in our lives. And uh, being a single guy with no children and having my dog with me, my clients, my family, and my friends know that um, we have a special relationship. Uh, and, it, it not, and it's not that it's any more special than anybody else who has a dog in their life, but they understand that connection. And I think that's why this book has meant so much to other people that have had pets. The, the biggest response I get back from people that have read the book, the most prominent thing that they say is, I can't imagine what you went through when you opened the car door and Oliver wasn't there because, you know, Buffy or, you know, my, my, my dog means so much to me. I don't know what I would do. And the thousands of people that rallied around me through strangers that I didn't know. And again, I, since I wasn't a big social media fan, I was like, you know, I don't really want all the empathy from people that I don't know, but it actually, it flipped like so many other things flipped during this story that uh, it actually was starting to give me strength as day two and day three and day four and day five went by. And there was this building of empathy and love and just people posting pictures of their pets and saying, we've, you know, we have to find Oliver. And, um, you know, it was shared over 15,000 times. And so it, 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 it just renewed or uh, strengthened the idea of, of how important the love of our pets are to us. And, and, and that buoyed my strength and helped me uh, and my clients and on a local level, people who know me, people who I drive, uh, uh, my family, my sisters coming up from Brooklyn, helping me, my clients offering me their bedrooms to sleep in their houses because I, I wasn't sleeping in the cottage with Oliver because I couldn't sleep in the bed without him. And, um, and all these people have pets and, and they knew uh, how important uh, Oliver was to me. Stephen, we so appreciate your soul stirring story about your love of animals as a child and the kidnapping of Oliver and the ultimate binding of Oliver and all the moments in between. It's just beautiful. Let's stop. Should you put your canine in a costume this Halloween? Purdue University Director Animal Welfare Science Candace Crony believes that every dog is different when it comes to dressing up, saying if the dog has a pet family that normally puts any sort of clothing, handles them, dresses them and tolerates that pretty well, odds are the dog is probably not going to be terribly disturbed. For pups less used to being costumed, School for the Dogs training facility owner and co-founder Annie Grossman, 
describes some signs of stress to look out for. If your pooch is excessively licking or shaking, panting or pacing, or has their ears back, they are likely in distress. Canine costumes should always be loose fitting and not limit mobility. Trying out the costume for short periods of time leading up to the festivities can help get your pet used to the feeling and help them understand that it is temporary. Grossman also offers ideas for non-invasive costumes such as collar that reads Scooby-Doo at schoolforthedogs.com. Yes, please pay attention to dogs that are in distress because I think that, you know, it's not a fun Halloween if the dog can't enjoy it, right? So next up, our crew walked with their feet and paws for a good cause in Ohio. Fur correspondent Julie and retriever reporter Sally recently attended a fundraiser to spread awareness for animals in need. Julie joins us from Medina with the details. Julie? Hi, we're at the ninth annual Medina County SPCA Cause for the Paws event. Around 400 people and nearly 200 dogs signed up to run and walk to help animals coming from situations of abuse, neglect, and abandonment. Reporter Sally wagged her tail for the entire one-mile fun walk as we watched people and pooches run the 5K. Registrants donated to participate as local businesses sponsored the event. 5K human winners in different age groups received awards. Eric Pitcher and his six-year-old dog Achilles won for being the first place runner in Top Dog. And we had the honor of giving two prizes on behalf of our sponsor, pet retail and content company, The Motley Crew, and pet accessory and decor company, Sabilu. Aurora won for being the most fashionable dog, while Bowser won for most chill pup. And Sally had a lot of fun barking with other supporters. Back to you, McGann. So happy that you had a lot of fun, and Sally looks adorable as always. And Pause for the Cause is a great cause, and we are happy to be covering this every year. Next stop, you can help choose a prize-winning picture. The Comedy Wildlife Photo Awards have announced their 2022 finalists. Some of this year's competitors include a couple of bickering birds, a selfie from the sea, a trail of turtles, and a stuffed squirrel. The annual contest began in 2015 and supports a different sustainable conservation organization every year. The 2022 beneficiary will be the UK group Whitley Fund for Nature. Additionally, the winning photographer will receive a one-week trip to Alex Walker's Syrian Safari camp in Kenya. You can cast your vote now at comedywildlifephoto.com until November 27th and winners will be announced on December 8th. Lovely! Next up, our producers selected one of their favorite recent viral videos and here is user at Nala the needy Rotti showing her dog's reaction to her freezing her face. Freeze and see your dog's reaction. Do, ba do, ba do, ba do. Oh, that is cute. And that's a wrap for us this morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you are on the globe. I'm Megan Aplon. Be sure to step out the latest headlines you need to know from the Podemic Network, brought to you by The Muttley Crew. And if you have feedback or story suggestions, please leave a comment. And be sure to subscribe, like, and share to The Muttley Crew channel on YouTube for fur and other possum entertainment. <laughs> now I've got nothing to complain about. That sucks. What will I do with my day? We were thinking about um, Alexandra coming on next week. Okay, see, so now you've just ruined it. The Motley Crew in pain, is it? So what? So I. So y'all are giving away shit, right? Motley Crew, but they are. You can't give away money. No, they can't. Okay, why are you answering? I'm simply venting. Can I do that? That's all right. As I drink my water, can I? Can I vent? Is that water? Vent? Yeah, it's water. It's tea. We thought it was tea. Yeah, because I'm British, so it'll have to be tea, you know. Should I do another one? Yeah, I had a couple audio glitches, would you mind? But I didn't. Why should I have to suffer? Unless you're trying to say it came from my side, then forget what I said. <laughs> Stop humiliating your dogs, God damn it! It's like, gosh, do you not just have children? Children are meant to be humiliated, and then they're supposed to go into therapy and complain about it. Oh my gosh, who else was holding their breath, hoping that I would get through the whole text without messing up? I know I was. Shit.
Oh shit, I'm in my pants. <laughs> <laughs>